Hello, this video is about uploading with SiteGrinder 3.5. Now, before we can upload a site with SiteGrinder, we need to first have the con connection settings properly configured, and so that's the first thing that we're going to do here. So I'm going to go to the Upload menu and choose a Connection Settings. Now, in the Connection Settings dialog, you'll see that there's both a web dev pane and an FTP pane where you can put in settings. Now, WebDAV is a modern, secure protocol, and it's the one that we recommend for using um, when uploading sites with SiteGrinder. Unfortunately, WebDAV support is not ubiquitous in the way that FTP is. So, if you want, so most hosts won't have a WebDAV installed. However, if your host has uh, PHP 4 or later, then SiteGrinder can install WebDAV for you on your server, and then you can uh, upload with WebDAV. And so that's what we're going to do in this session here. We're going to configure FTP, see how my server set up, install WebDAV, and upload the site. And that's all very simple. So the first thing we're going to do is come here to the FTP pane and fill out our FTP information. Now, you should have received from whatever hosting company you're using the server username and password. And so we're just going to enter those in here. So I'll enter in my FTP server information, my username, and my password. And then we want to set the remote path. Now, the remote path is where on the server should the files be placed. Now, if you're using a host like GoDaddy, then you don't need a remote path with a typical GoDaddy installation. But almost all other hosts, you will have a place where your uh, site needs to go. And if you wanted to place the uh, site in a test folder or a subfolder, then you might also have to put in a subdirectory. Now, I just am browsing now my, my host. And so here you can see the, the folders that the host has already set up on my server. Now, typically, you, do, you never put files for most hosts at the top level. You almost always put them in either a www directory or a public HTML directory or perhaps a directory name, um, htdocs or http docs. These are common places that the hosting companies have set up where they want you to place your files for, um, to be served for your web page. And files must be in there to be accessible via um, a browser. So I'm just going to come here to the uh, public HTML. See that? There's no subfolders in there, but I'll just go ahead and uh, make one. I'm going to put this site not at the top level. I'm going to put this in a, in a test directory just as we can see that that's done. So I'll just make a new directory here called test and select it. And now in the lower part of this pane, I can see that my remote path is public HTML test, and I'll just go ahead and select that, and we're all set. Now, if I were going to upload with FTP and not upload with WebDAV, then I would also need to provide an HTTP address here. Now, an HTTP address is what's the address of the website, what's the URL of your website, but if there are any subdirectories, they would also have to be here. So I'll just go ahead and fill this out here. So for example, this is just going to be www.testtesttest.biz. That's my, my URL. And because I'm placing this in a subdirectory, it would also have to have this test folder on it. Um, if I were uploading to the top level of my site directly into the public HTML folder, for example, then the, it would just simply be test, 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 biz, be no, nothing, no big deal. Now, if I'm going to install WebDAV, um, WebDAV, when the WebDAV installer runs, it will guess the uh, HTTP path and provide it and configure it for me. Um, it may not guess correctly, so if, you're, if you know in advance that your FTP information is radically different than your HTTP information, for example, my FTP is, uh, server is you know, 1234567789, but my HTTP address is fancyflowers.com, then you're going to have to provide the HTTP path as well. So, but anyway, I'll just uh, delete this for, for the moment, and I'm going to say install WebDAV. Now, when you install WebDAV, um, you're going to be confronted with this little dialogue, and it just makes you check a few things before proceeding. One, um, do you know that your server is in fact running PHP 4 or later? Um, you've configured your FTP connection correctly. We know that we have. We just browse the server. That's all set. Um, and then we want a new username and new password that we're going to elect now for WebDAV. This should not be the same as your FTP username and password, nor should it be the same as your CMS login, whatever that is. So. Uh, we're going to choose a, use, a new username. Uh, I'll just choose the username of uh, Doppelganger here. And a new password for uh, uh, a new WebDev password. And uh, so that's set. These are the things I want 
to be assigned, and then I'll just go ahead and install WebDev. Now, when I install WebDev, what's happening here is Cycron is using FTP to connect to the server and then is going to uh, install WebDev and configure it. It also has to check uh, permission levels on the server and make sure that the uh, permission level stuff is, is uh, configured correctly as well because different servers need different types of permission levels set on different files for them to be able to browse correctly, run correctly as PHP, things like that. So this will just take a, a second here. Um, and when we're done, then we'll be able to upload a site and we'll see what SiteGrinder has done when it completes as well. Um, if I edit this video, I will edit out this part here where you're waiting. But if you're listening to me now, you know that I did not, in fact, edit the uh, video. So, All right, well, it's nearly done. And uh, it looks like it's uh, WebDev is uh, taking uh, almost a full minute to install uh, to this uh, um, server, I think it's a, it's a long ways away from where I am right now, and we're nearly done. And I don't know whether you can hear it, but there's a little bing that plays when it completes. And bing, there it is. All right, so it is uh, installed. So we'll just uh, close this out. Now notice that it filled out our HTTP address for us. Um, the way I had deleted that and it's now filled it back in, filled it in correctly. And if we come over here to the WebDAV pane, this has been filled out correctly for us. There's a URL here that's been provided, username, password, that sort of stuff. If your host does have a, a WebDAV installation, then you will put the WebDAV URL, which your host will give you, your WebDAV um, username and password in here, um, turn it on with this checkbox here, and you might need to uh, add a remote path here if you're uploading to someplace other than the WebDAV route, um, and you can just provide that there, but a normal SiteGrinder WebDAV installation does not use the remote path. So, all right, so to say okay, and now we're ready to upload. So since this is a new site for the going up for the first time, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to choose upload everything, which is going to upload my entire site. Now these other options are going to be in the next video, and these are for um, uploading changes, re uh, downloading remote edits, and then or doing the two of them combined. And we'll talk about them in the next video. These are for doing um, site maintenance. But at the moment, all I do is I do upload everything. Now when I call up any of these upload things, it's like I'm just going to calculate for a little bit on how big of an upload or download it needs to do. Uh, here it's giving me a total transfer. It's going to be about six megabytes, and I will click continue, and now the um, transfer starts, and we will uh, uh, watch it run up here. Um, I will probably stop this video now, and uh, um, so that we don't have to wait for all six megabytes to upload, and uh, um, I'll pick up again from the uh, the next video. I hope this has been useful.